Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm Brett from Overtime Gaming. How's things going? Uh, this video is going to be a playthrough of what I think should have happened at the Royal Rumble this year between CM Punk and The Rock. Now, if any of you have followed me on Twitter, which I very much doubt, um, you would have all seen my rant on this. Now, I didn't like the fact The Rock won, not because I disliked The Rock, I actually really like The Rock. But it's the fact that CM Punk had to put over a guy that's way past his prime. Now, in my opinion, as has been backed up by a lot of people, that I believe CM Punk is the best wrestler in the world today. But not just that. This is my opinion, remember. He is the best wrestler that the WWE has ever had other than Bret Hart. Now, let's look at it, right? Punk has the best mic skills in the WWE today. All you John Cena fans, I quite like John Cena. Um, he has carried the company for a lot, but he isn't that great on the mic. He really isn't. He comes across not how he's supposed to most of the time, where CM Punk knows exactly how to play the crowd into his hands. He knows how to get us believe in him. He knows how to get us doing whatever he wants. He is the best on the mic. Not only that, he is the best wrestler, technically, the WWE has and even things like Ring of Honor, which I'm a big, big fan of, and TNA, which I've gone off a bit lately. He is better than anyone. He could carry anyone and make him look good. That's what made his match with The Rock look so good, was the fact he did carry The Rock. The Rock is past it now, let's face it. Now, I grew up loving The Rock. He was probably my favorite wrestler other than Chris Jericho. And I think he, he was brilliant. He's not now. He's had that 10-year gap since being the last WWE champion. He's had that 10-year gap, and he's come back, and he's not as good anymore. He's simply not. The other bit that winds me up about this is the fact that The Rock is so inconsistent of how he shows up on Raw and SmackDown. He shows up whenever he wants, and that's basically when he wants to promote a film. Uh, I don't understand why did I understand why the WWE given the title and it's for business. I completely understand that and right now the WWE need, need WWE needs money. But the thing I don't like is the fact that the CM Punk has carried this company on his back for the past year. He has done everything and in my opinion he should be headlining WrestleMania and he should win. Now, given the title to the Rock it is a good storyline. The bit that gets me is the fact that Rock has not worked for this. He has not earned his title shot at all. There's other people that have worked in day, day in, day out. Even John Cena has worked day in, day out. And he deserves a title shot more than The Rock. Another guy is Dolph Ziggler. Why he hasn't cashed in his money in the bank briefcase yet, I don't know. He will at WrestleMania, I can guarantee it. He won't at Elimination Chamber. He will at WrestleMania. Now, CM Punk, I think, will win the title back at Elimination Chamber. Because that sets up a WrestleMania triple threat of The Rock versus John Cena versus CM Punk. Which allows the WWE to get round the fact they said it's a once in a lifetime fight last year. Now, I've never seen that fight. I, I went off wrestling last year. And I really got back into it this year because of CM Punk. I knew him from Ring of Honor. I'm a huge Ring of Honor fan. And in my opinion, Ring of Honor is a lot better than WWE. If they had the money to broadcast Ring of Honor the way WWE was, does and create the advertisement WWE does, Ring of Honor would be blowing WWE out of the water. They have such better technically gifted wrestlers other than CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. And Dolph Ziggler even. They have such better wrestlers with the likes of Mike Bennett, Roderick Strong, Kevin Steen, Al Generico, who has, I believe, has left the WWE, which is a fantastic signing by WWE, and that's the type they need. But Ring of Honor is so much better, and I think, in my opinion, WWE takes a leaf out of Ring of Honor's book. Now, at Final Battle, I don't know if any of you have watched it. If you haven't, go check it out. It's only 15 bucks, and because I'm in England, I actually got it for eight quid, which is a bargain because that was one of the most fantastic pay-per-views wrestling-wise I have ever seen in my life. It was brilliant. I hadn't heard of some of the Ring of Honor guys on that card, but that just sold me completely. I'm now a ringside member and pay my, wow, well, it's £5 a month. 
to get exclusive access to everything I want from Ring of Honor. Now, guys on that card, there was BJ Whitmer, which is an older guy now. If you don't know, he did have a short stint in WWE. It wasn't very long. Um, he, Him and Reek Titus, who is absolutely brilliant, he was part of the All Night Express with Kenny King. They had a match with the world's greatest tag team of Shout and Benjamin Charlie Horse, who, in my opinion, now in Ring of Honor, are jobbers. They're nothing more than that. They're there to make new teams look good. Now, I think this is brilliant by Ring of Honor because they've got two stars, which Charlie Horse isn't the biggest star. I think he's a very good wrestler, but Mike's skills are a bit iffy. But they've got two really well-known stars in Shelton Benjamin, especially in Japan, and Charlie Horse. Now, they don't use them to be the head of their tag team division, which is what WWE would do. They use them to bring up new guys and make them better and make them look a lot better than they actually are. Teams like the Briscoes, which I think are the best tag team in the world, in any company. They've had some brilliant battles against Shelter Benjamin and Charlie Horse, and it just makes the Briscoes look even better. And this match at Final Battle with um, BJ Whitmer and Reed Titus made them look so good. Now, I know BJ Whitmer had that bit where he went through the table at the end, which was poor by Charlie Haas, but BJ Whitmer saved himself there. If he hadn't have flipped a little at, um, at the time he did, he'd break in his neck. Simple. So, and the other match that I thought about that, which WWE wouldn't have done, was Matt Hardy versus Adam Cole. Now, we all know Matt Hardy's history. I don't need to go into that. But he came back to Ring of Honor, which was a big selling point for Ring of Honor for their pay-per-view. And it really worked out well for them. And the fact he went up against the TV champion, Adam Cole, who I think will be one of the best wrestlers in the world in the next few years, was brilliant by their part. They set him up against a young guy who has a f fantastic future. And they didn't make, make Adam Cole look weak. They didn't get him to put over Matt Hardy in a way that makes Matt Hardy look brilliant. They got him to put over Matt Hardy in a way that Matt, makes Matt Hardy look like a cheat and puts him across as that heel but also puts him across in a way that he can't beat Adam Cole cleanly. Now, I think this is brilliant because he gave Adam Cole that chance to put a bit of anger into him and make him come across as that more angry character, which he needed. But it also puts the fact across he can now have an ongoing feud with Matt Hardy and the fact he can say, you didn't beat me clean. And if you didn't see it, Matt Hardy grabbed his Adam Cole's tights when he rolled him up after pulling the shirt over the referee as well as low blowing Adam Cole. Now, WWE would have done that different. They would have had, like they did with The Rock, Matt Hardy beat Adam Cole cleanly, which would have been completely wrong because it makes Adam Cole look weak. And that's what this has done for CM Punk. It's made him look weak. They've made this storyline of him having The Shield, which I really like The Shield, and Brad Maddox doing everything for him. And it's ruined CM Punk. It's made him look weak. And that's not what CM Punk is. CM Punk can carry himself more than anyone else on the roster. And in my opinion, he should have beat The Rock. And you'll see this in this video. Now, there's a bit in this video which I'll talk about when it gets to it. And this, that's the bit I think that should have fueled this rivalry. Now, going back to what I said about WrestleMania that I think it should be. John Cena, The Rock and CM Punk. Now... I really do believe CM Punk will win the match at Elimination Chamber, but I'm probably the only person that does. Hang on, this is the bit I'm talking about. CM Punk walks away with the title in the middle of the match, as if he's just had enough. He should have done this. If they're going to continue with this coward storyline of CM Punk, this is what he should have done. He shouldn't have been put over. He should have walked off with his title. And it should have been the end of the match. Now, I didn't want it to be the end of the match in this video because I just felt like fighting more and speaking more, on, in all honesty. Now, but anyway, let's get back to the point. CM Punk versus The Rock versus John Cena at WrestleMania. It allowed them to get past that once-in-a-lifetime match because now it involves someone else. But also gives them a chance, not only for John Cena to get one back on The Rock, but to get one back at CM Punk but also make CM Punk lose the title 
without him actually losing the match. I think if this is to happen, John Cena will pin The Rock because it allows him to have beaten The Rock once, which makes them 1-1 one, one, in all honesty and does set up that third match, which I hope doesn't happen, but I think it will, just so they can finally prove who the best is. But the fact that CM Punk won't lose the title by being pinned, I think he'll get hit by a chair or something like that and knocked out. Or Paul Heyman will turn on him and Brock will come out and F5 him. I think that sets up so many more storylines for CM Punk. Not only does he have his rematch, but the fact he can say he didn't lose the title. He can blame it on someone else. And it allows them to give John Cena the title which I know they want to do and they need to do. So, I just think that's what should happen. Leave a comment in the, sec in the comment section below. Tell me what you think of my idea. Tell me what you think of my, talk my video. I know it's a bit poor quality. I've got a video camera set up at the moment. I'm basically just setting up my channel now. It's going to be sports videos like um, NFL, um, NHL, FIFA, the baseball, basketball. All sorts like that. Comment what you want me to do, who you want me to be in videos. I'm thinking of doing WWE Universe as well. Um, so, yeah, just leave below what you think I should do. And just let me know, all right? Um, leave a like. Subscribe to me if you want. Um, I understand I've only got this video up at the moment. Um, but basically, you've heard my plans for the future. I am saving up for a um, game capture. But I want to get used to setting up videos first. I want to get used to how I'm going to comment on videos, whether I do live um, commentary, which I haven't done for this video, but I will be doing for my Madden video, um, or whether I do commentary over the top after I've recorded a video like I have done now. It's a bit harder doing it that way because I have to think about what I'm saying more. Um, but I just want to get used to it. So leave a like, comment on anything. I'm welcome to criticism. Just help me out a bit, guys, all right? And uh, let people know about my channel. Subscribe if you want to. Follow me on Twitter. I left it at the beginning of the video and all that stuff. Um, peace out, guys.